Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hidden Hustle, a uh, special edition with uh, Jamie and Greg from Our Sports Daily, uh, talking about uh, a pretty big commitment. Uh, Notre Dame dipped in the transfer portal, pick up safety Brandon Joseph uh, from Northwestern. He's a two-year starter there. Uh, you know, four-game rule, um, redshirt freshman, uh, you know, three years ago. And then he started the last two years, uh, you know, productive player, uh, you know, made a lot of, made a lot of plays in the ball. Obviously he's got nine interceptions in his two years as a starter. Um, I think he's got 17 and a half, uh, uh, havoc plays. So, you know, he finds the football he's, he's made plays, he's made plays. Um, certainly it's, it's a big pickup. And just in terms of, uh, before we kind of dive into him, how do you think, what does it ma- mean for the depth chart at Notre Dame, Greg? Um, in my opinion, he, he's, he'll he'll be penciled in the start right away um he's got over well over a thousand snaps almost two thousand snaps um at safety so you know that that's important right just being able to step in and you know someone actually asked me about you know how it compared to like kane madden when he when he uh committed to notre dame and i said you know kane madden that that was a mac that was a mac level player like this is he's in the big 10 He's playing, you know, Big Ten caliber teams. Um, made plays against Ohio State, so he's seen some, you know, real competition. Yeah, played a right? way better yeah, competition. Yeah, way better. So, um, you know, I, I think he can play. I think he could honestly play either safety spot. Um, he he's he has that type of versatility. Um, so yeah, I, I think he would. You know, he fits in well next to so like, if if Notre Dame wanted to rotate right, and a lot of teams like to rotate safeties. I think that he could play next to Ramon Henderson just as well as he could play next to someone like um, Xavier Watts or Houston Griffith, right? I think he could complement um, any of the players that are on the roster right now. So um, big, big difference for the depth chart um, right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I th- I would say that um, very good chance that he becomes a starter, but I wouldn't, I, like you said, I will put him in pencil. I wouldn't put him in pen. Right. Um, and that way, I would say it's similar to Kane Madden, where I think Kane Madden had to come in and win the job. And yeah. he did win the job, but it definitely isn't something, um, you know, so I, I guess we can get into him now. Um, he was, you know, an All-American, so similar, very similar to Kane Madden in that sense, where he was an All-American. But when I watch film of him, I don't see a guy who's, he's not Kyle Hamilton level. He's not right. that kind of All-American uh, you know, he's pred- six interceptions in, in mm-hmm. nine games in um, uh, 2020, you know, the COVID year when he's only playing, only playing against Big Ten competition. So it was all against Big right. Ten, but um, it's also Big Ten West. It's not the best, uh, you know, it's the worst side of of of, of the conference. And I, I mean, I watch him and I look at him and I say he, you know, he was OK a little bit more context into him too. He was ranked like number 1000 in um, uh, the 24 seven composite before the thing. Right. So he's not yeah. a highly ranked guy, um, you know, all power, bunch of power five offers, not like any time, big time schools, but you know, that Northwestern level of schools, um, but certainly not a guy who was, and he was like all state Texas, I think as a junior. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a good high school player. Um you know, and then didn't step in immediately because he had the redshirt year, but then started and obviously made an impact. Um, I think when I look at him and I see that he's going to have potentially three years left with as a super senior, if, if he decided to stay three right. years, um, I think there's still a lot of development that he needs to do. Um, so even to say like with an Isaiah Pryor, when he came the first year and he didn't play, and I don't, I don't necessarily think that happened with Joseph, but I think Isaiah Pryor got better. At, you know, he's been better since he's arrived at Notre right. Dame. And I think you could see something like that where Joseph, I think, still has a lot of room to get better. He's still a young player. Um, I don't think he's a, an elite athlete. He's he's a decent athlete, you know, like above average, um, but certainly not like a, a burner. Um, and good in coverage. Like I think PFF had him, you know, given up uh, over the two years less than 40 NFL uh, passer rating, right? It's good. He's given up one touchdown in, in his right. time, right? Um, and and obviously has has those interceptions. Tackling, it's a problem. He, he, he's, he really struggled this last year. 
Like mm-hmm. if you compared it to from a Notre Dame perspective, and I know everyone say, man, DJ Brown did this or Houston Griffith did this. Comparatively speaking, just in terms of sheer numbers of missed tackles, like it's not even close. He, he like doubled them up combined. Right. right. He missed a lot of tackles. Miss, miss, I watched the Michigan game. He missed six tackles in that game. Uh, you know, made a bunch of tackles too. I think he had 12 or something overall, but he, he missed six. And yeah. they were like whiffs, like bad ones. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, I, I think he, he, I mean, if he tackles like that, he's not going to, yeah, I don't think he'll start at Notre Dame. Right. He's got to play better. Um, so my big question is, is, is versus the run. I don't think he's, he's kind of like not confident with his angles. Um, I, I would say, um, when when you watch him, to me, it almost looks he looks young. Yeah, he looks young the way he's attacking. So um, I know you, you know, you're a secondary guy. What <laughs> what do you see when you see him a, 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 as a tackler? So I thought 2020 was a lot better, um, and I think there's a correlation there between the quality of the defense at as a whole that Northwestern had in 2020. Yeah, and then, much better plays around him. Much yeah. better plays around him, and I think that. I, I think honestly it affected him a little bit because you just didn't see like he had a lot more like like almost like uh like urgency to his game when he was playing in 2020. Um because you know you you know you know when you have like a good team and you know you have a good defense, right? Like everything is just like a like a, a, a bit more like quicker, right? And a bit more has more energy to it, like life to it. And it's not to say that he's not trying hard. It's it's kind of hard like when you when you've kind of been through it, like you kind of can tell when someone is just like not as sharp, um, you know, because like the, the Northwestern defense this year was really bad. Like I watched the the Duke game. They give up 250 yards in the first quarter to Duke. You yeah, know? It's Duke. Yeah. <laughs> it's Duke. Like it's, that's really bad. Like you're, you're on, you're on pace to give up a thousand yards total offense to Duke. Right. And he didn't give up any plays in that first quarter. So it's, it's just like, you know, you're, you, you're just going to up against it in every single game. Um, so, you know, we were talking about, you know, before we started recording, like I, I think that a good outcome for, for Joseph would be somewhere like, uh, like Jalen Elliott, um, Jalen Elliott, the, the player where, in, in, and I'm not like 2018 Jalen Elliott, right? Yeah. Not, great. He had a great year. In yeah, 2018, yeah. Right. So like not a, not a great athlete, where he's supposed to be doing his job, you know, making plays when they come. Um, and then, you know, a complimentary Attacking at a much piece, higher level than he had previously, a complimentary piece to the players yeah. around him. Right. So he's not the type of guy like, like Kyle Hamilton, like you said, like he's not going to make the defense better. Like I think that the quality of players around him can lift him up. Right. He has a defensive line now with Notre Dame that, he never had with Northwestern, right? He has the he has a, a better defensive staff like Cam Hart next to him. He's like a really good player. Um, you know, Ramon Henderson even next to him might be better than what he would get at Northwestern, right? So, um, you know, just like I think being in a in a in a defense like Notre Dame's top twenty in SP plus would lift his game up. And like you said, I think that the the development that can still come from him is you know kind of the unknown for us and you know that that's kind of like the wild card of you know kind of projecting what he can be going forward in in the defense for Notre Dame um and and the other thing to mention too because obviously they're bringing Houston Griffith back and right and Houston Griffith um I think solid is, is a way to kind of describe his game but that's like the ceiling for him as what he's shown, like he he's at, he has like zero ball production. I mean, he literally right. had no pass breakups, no interceptions this year. He's that's always how he's been. He's just never been able to find the football. So I, I think when you look at what you're adding and Joseph, you find you, there's a guy who finds the football, or yeah. even in some of the cases where you know he's getting tipped interception. Well, the right. ball finds him, and some right. guys that just have that. That's a and skill to me. Yes, that's it a, is skill, a skill being around the ball. It is a yeah. skill. Um, so. Um, there's that. And I think even if you look at DJ Brown, you know, who had a few interceptions this year and, but he's only had one other pass breakup. Right. So uh, these guys aren't overly productive at finding the football. Um, and, every, and we know that DJ Brown, 
not another guy who's a little bit limited athlete. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think what you're looking at too is if we were just going to project right now, you would say Ramon, him and with Ramon Henderson, I think I that would be a pretty decent, I think that has a, a decent ceiling right there. Right. And Joseph has to get better as a tackler. Uh, but also remind people too, Aloe Gilman, who when he came over from Navy, um, Mr. if you look at his, he he was awesome tackler that first year, right? And on the second second year, he had a bump shoulder, didn't tackle as well. But um, or, or the second year technically in the program was his first year playing, yeah. right? Yeah. But his numbers, like his PFF numbers at uh, um, at Navy, he missed quite a few tackles. He missed quite a few, and he was a freshman, right? right. So it was like. You know, that's the way you got to look at it is Joseph is, can he get better? Because that's going to be key. And that's going to be key. And if he can, and and kind of like maintain kind of what he is in coverage, then that's going to be a huge pickup for Notre Dame. Right. And and I can't like stress enough to like the, the number of snaps that he's played. It's very important. Like, like being like he's seen kind of everything – He's seen what teams can throw at him. And, you know, it, w- it wouldn't be the first time someone had, like, something of, like, a sophomore slump. Yeah. Right? Where you come in, and it's, like, your first full year, right? Because the year before was COVID. And even even though he struggled a little bit more, like, he still found ways to be around the ball. He found ways to make plays. You know, he's still making interceptions, right? It's not like um, he just, like, completely fell off the map, right? He just struggled in areas where the, the year before, like, he really hadn't, right? 2020. Like eight teams are eight to twenty four, throwing throwing against him, right? And obviously in twenty twenty one they were a lot better. Um, only missed six tackles, I think it was, in twenty 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 one, missed twenty one tackles. Which I mean that's that's a big number, right? It's like JD Bertrand, like you were talking before, like JD Bertrand. We all know he struggled in that area, um, specifically. He missed nineteen, and that's yeah. in you know one. And, 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 and the, he made a lot more tackles than right. like than he missed. Right. Right. So, right. so yeah. he, like, he also led the team and like, I think it was stops too. So yeah. it's like, he was, it's kind of like the, the Bertrand had like a Sean Crawford type season where it's like a ton of production, but also a ton of kind of like missed plays. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that, you know, Joseph, you cut down on some of the misses, right. Get into maybe a better defensive structure and, that'll bring up his, you know, overall game. Like we saw with Alohi, right? I think yeah. it was 17 missed tackles he had for Navy in 2016. So, and at the bare minimum, it's depth and competition to push the guys there and they need it at that spot, right? They're going to need mm-hmm. it at that spot. So, um I think it's a you know, it's a very important pickup and also too just to see that Notre Dame picks up a guy in the portal that went to Northwestern, that's a good player. And they're, you know, seen as attractive destination. I think that's important. And isn't a grad transfer either. Yes. And he's not a graduate transfer. I mean, that's like, so that's, like a pretty big development for the program yeah. by on just on the last guy was a low Right. So, right. um, yeah. Uh, so just kind of transitioning off that, obviously big pickup there. We'll just do quick comments. Harry, he stand, uh, you know, it's going to be the new offensive line coach, new old offensive line coach coming right. back. After he left in the 2017 season, he was, you know, obviously there from 2012 to 2017. Everyone knows the track record, right? Like in ridiculous track record in terms of, you know, Zach Martin, Chris Watt, Mike McGlinchey, Ronnie Stanley, uh, uh, Nick Martin, uh, Quentin Nelson, um, and, and all these guys swear by him, right? right. Um, so, and I think technically, and then anyone who really played and started at Notre Dame will tell you that this guy is like, you know, made them the player that he is. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a very big development in that sense too. And he has this reputation, especially within the offensive line, kind of like football community as maybe the best technical coach out there right now. Right. Um, uh, at the college level for sure. Right. And right. so it's a big, it's a, it's a big uh, development in that, in that sense. The question about recruiting, he recruited well, very picky, uh, you know, in terms of who he offered. That's going to be interesting to kind of see how that goes because it's a little bit harder to be picky, I think, as as things have changed. And then also, everyone remembers the last, the 2018 season, 
uh, their 2018 class. I mean, it was a bad, it was not it was a bad, uh, yeah. it was a bad offensive line class. So, um, just your, your over thing. Like, I, I think it's a good thing for Notre Dame. Um, but I do have some questions and that's how I feel. But how do you feel about it? So I do. It, so it's a good thing because you look at what they have right now, just like with, with, with Blake and, and alt. And then you have Spindler and you have, you know, Christophic who has, you know, years left. Um, we'll see what happens with Jared Patterson, but you, you just look at the youth there. I know they're they're you guys have talked about them being high on Pat Coogan. Um, and then you have the the freshman incoming class now. So you have those ten the ten guys that are that are young, either you know, three years left or four years left on with eligibility, that we know they're really good. And we love the offensive line class um coming in now. So it's like at least then you know you have multiple years of quality players coming in. The recruiting part is hard because, you know, we look at the end result, but what was the process getting to that result? And that is the part that is kind of like, it's a matter of almost, I don't want to say mystery, but it's the kind of the unknown with him Yeah. where it's like, how did we get to there? How did we get to that spot? You know, cause like one year, I think it was the Tillery year where you land Tillery, who was technically an offensive lineman ends up on the D line. Tristan Hodge, who was a top 100 player, you know, left after one year in the program. And Tillery well, two never, years, two years, and, yeah, but, or two years in the program. Yeah. And Tillery never played offensive line. And I think maybe there was one other player in that class, but that's, I, I mean, that would be Ruin was the other guy in that class. Ruin, right? Yeah. So, and that's a, that's a mid three star player. Like that, right now, if that happened, like if that class came next year, it would be unheard of. Well, like it, would, and, it, it would be, and I think, you know, you even look at the next year with Tommy Kramer. And Eichenberg, and obviously those end up being, I mean, they're multi-year starters, very good players. But Parker Boudreaux bounced quick. So, I mean, you can't really have too many of these classes. And, and to be fair, I don't know how much is that is on he stand and how much was that like an overall um, program philosophy right. of how many guys to do. But the good news is, is that he walks into a situation where they get five and five. Yeah. I mean, obviously not all these guys – not all 10 of those guys are finishing at right. Notre Dame. That, that's just not going to happen. Um, but, I mean, I, I would say Blake Fisher, I mean, I already thought he was going to be a first-round pick. I mean, put it down in pen, in pen, like Sharpie. It's a first-round pick. Uh, I I think, you know, Joe Ald has a chance to be a first-round pick. On, and, like, Emil Wagner, I think, is going to be a first-round pick if he works with Terry he's sent. Like, um, so – I, I think Notre Dame fans should be excited about the what these guys can do if they really put in the time and and, and work with him because, I mean he's he's proven he can do that. So um, I, think I mean it does add thing. confidence that these guys are going to reach their potential. Yeah, you know, like I think before if there's <laughs> like a question. Now I think there's very much like they're going to hit because because Harry's you know he has the track record. Yeah. And I'm also going to say too, that Tommy Reese is the best offensive coordinator that Harry Heastan worked with at Notre Dame. Right. I think, uh, so I think that, that, uh, relationship and Matt is going to go well. And Matt Bayless too big because you only had the one year yeah. of Matt Bayless. Right. And now he's going to have all of these guys. And that was a problem with a lot of, uh, physical development, like late physical development for a right. lot of these offensive linemen. So, um, all right, well, uh, you know, quick one today, just wanted to hit on Brandon Joseph, very big pickup for Notre Dame. Obviously, I don't think, you know, just this, he's not going to be an All-American, instant All-American pickup, but still an important pickup for uh, a guy who could likely start and at the very least provide good depth and good competition there. And Harry C. Sand, very good chance that it could be a home run hire for, yeah. for Notre Dame. So um, I think people should be excited about it. Uh, I know I'm excited about it. I'm excited. Hopefully we get good news from uh, Jared Patterson. I think that's going to help with Jared Patterson too. Hopefully we get good news on Isaiah Foskey too, because if they get those guys, they're going to be set up very well for 2022. Um, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in today. Um, you know, check out uh, more of this stuff. We'll be back next week with more videos uh, and we'll see you then.